You're watching Capital City Sunday. Good morning. This week on Capital City Sunday, a new dawn for Democrats as Governor Tony Evers signs legislative maps that give them a fighting chance at the Capitol for the first time in more than a decade. Good news for democracy, and it means that there's the possibility of good news for Democrats. How Democrats will take advantage of a new competitive edge and why new maps could bring new Democratic candidates into the fold. I wonder what my friends on the other side of the aisle are going to say when they lose le legislative races on the issues this November and can't blame the maps anymore. And confidence from the chair of the Republican Party of Wisconsin, why he says his party still wins. And just what are the chances of Democrats taking control and what changes will we see under the maps? Wiz Politics editor J.R. Ross is here to break that down with me. And after months of speculation, businessman Eric Hovde launches his bid for U.S. Senate. His message to Wisconsin. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sarah Masler Donar. For the first time in more than a decade, Democrats in Wisconsin have a shot at the majority in the state legislature. Last week, Governor Tony Evers signed the new voting maps into law just about a week after the Republican controlled legislature passed them. The governor submitted the maps to the state Supreme Court after it overturned the current legislative maps. A report from two consultants that the court hired to analyze the maps shows the governor significantly shrank the Republican majority in the Assembly and Senate. Democrats are almost certain to gain seats in both chambers at some point. Evers hailed the new maps, saying they reflect the will of the people. Today is a victory. Not for me or any political party, but for a state and the people of Wisconsin who spent a decade demanding more and demanding better of us as elected officials, including many of the people here behind me today. For Republicans, passing these maps was a way to avoid having the liberal-leaning Wisconsin Supreme Court decide. They described having no better option. The maps will be in place for the November election, but lawmakers are waiting on guidance from the court on whether the maps will be in place for special elections before that. Joining me now to break down the district changes and take a look at some of those districts that are becoming more competitive is J.R. Ross, the editor of WizPolitics.com and journalist. J.R., thanks so much for being on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Of course. So let's get into it. These maps definitely shrink Republican majorities considerably, but they are still favorable to Republicans, which is why the GOP-controlled legislature chose these, of course. So with that in mind, though, you know, what could Dem Democrats accomplish this election year as far as composition of the legislature? Let's separate the houses, okay? Yep. Look at the Senate first. In the Senate, there's no path majority likely this fall, but over a two cycle process, possibly. What I mean by that is we have half the Senate up this fall, the other half up in 2026. There aren't enough competitive seats this fall to really shrink that majority significantly. Now it's 22 to 10 with one vacancy right now for Republicans in the Senate. There are probably three seats that are really good pick up opportunities for Democrats, maybe a fourth, depending how things go. So that tells you that while it's likely to be a better scenario for Democrats this fall in the Senate or next spring, mm -hmm. it's not gonna be a majority. The assembly is a different story. There's an opportunity. The question is one, top of the ticket, how does it do? Two, money, three, um, candidate quality and message. You know, you, you can't just say, okay, it's a Democrat district top of the ticket, it's gonna go Democrat no matter what. So what I'm looking for is who, who Democrats recruit. Mm -hmm. They've never, ha they haven't had to have 50, 60 competitive districts in a long time. This is an opportunity for them to really get, you know, a lot of people out there. So they go out and find. Resources have been a problem for them lately. Ben Wickler, state party chair for Democrats, has been a phenomenal fundraiser. They should have resources. But message-wise, what dominates this fall? Is it abortion, immigration, taxes, the economy? Like, those things will influence these down-ballot races significantly. Let's get into some of the district changes mm -hmm. now. JR, Sydney, can you bring up some of the maps that we've put together here? So right now we have uh, up the changes in the state assembly. We put these together based on an analysis from Marquette Law School fellow John Johnson. He based this off the results of 2022 elections. Now, 2022 maps on the left, Governor Evers maps that he submitted and has now signed on the right. Dark red, solidly Republican, dark blue, solidly Democrat, lighter red or blue, leans either way. Closest mm -hmm. to 50-50 here. So, JR, pretty clear we have a lot of blue added into the map there. On the right here, Democrats gaining ground, more competitive districts that were not so much so before. Let's talk through it. So, look at true toss-ups, like 50-50 type races. I'd go to, like, suburban Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. uh, district that includes Greendale, Hales Corners, and Greenfield. That one looks to be a true toss-up, 50-50. What's going to happen there? I look over up the Green Bay market. That shifted significantly under Governor Evers' maps. Republicans done a very good job of kind of 
splitting Democrats a bit up there to kind of keep those in Republican hands. But now we've got a new open seat that includes parts of Green Bay and Ashwaubenon. And on. That's 50-50. So those are your true tosses. But then you get those, those leaning seats, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. These include ones that Democrats have to defend. Jody Emerson up at uh, uh, Eau Claire, for example, she was drawn into a district with a freshman representative of Karen Hurd of Fall Creek. So Jody had a more Democratic seat before. It's still like almost 55% Democratic, but now you have a GOP incumbent in your district and it's a more competitive environment. So how is that topic going to impact stuff like that? Mm -hmm. um, looking on the Republican side of the aisle, you know, you go through, uh, this is one of my favorite ones actually. So Steve Doyle's a Democrat from Onalaska. He has fought against the top of the ticket almost every election, even a target every time. His district actually doesn't get much better for him under the Democratic map. It's actually fairly Republican, about 53.5% or so. So for, there's an example of, this is a seat that Democrats have right now. They would need to defend, most likely to keep a chance for the majority alive, but they also have to fight against that top of the ticket tied. Doyle has done it before. Can he do it again, especially if you have Donald Trump at the top of the ticket? Again, those factors we discussed, yeah. they, you know, strong candidates can make a huge difference. Let's bring up state senate. Uh, obviously, left side, 2022, right side, Governor Evers. Talk through some of the changes we're seeing here. So look at that blue in the southwest corner of the state, okay? Here's what's key. There's a one north of Dane County, it's a 14th Senate district. That is now represented by Joan Balwig of Marquezana Republican. She is drawn out of that seat to the east. She told me this week she wants to run for the 14th again. Well, it's about a 53% Democratic seat. That's not great environment for somebody mm -hmm. who, by the way, doesn't have much of that territory in her current district. That's a great pickup opportunity. But you have an incumbent who's on the Joint Finance Committee, who's raised money before, who's been around for a while to take on. So who will Democrats find to run in that seat? That's gonna be a fascinating question. That's one of their best pickup opportunities. That sliver of blue by Lake Winnebago, that's a really interesting change that's happened. So um, Rachel Cabral Cavera, Republican from Appleton, represents this area right along Lake Winnebago in Appleton area. She was moved to the 19th Senate District. Uh, that is on, or sorry, she remains the 19th, but part of her district, the 18th, becomes the 18th. Mm -hmm. It's now Appleton, uh, Menasha, Nina, and Oshkosh. A pretty Democratic seat with no incumbent in it. That's a great pickup option for Democrats. They are banking on that seat being in their column after mm -hmm. this fall. Then go up the Fox Valley to the Green Bay area. Before you had really Green Bay split into two Senate districts. Now you have a district that has three Republicans in it, Andre Jacques from De Pere, Eric Wimberger of Green Bay, and Rob Coles of Green Bay. What's going to happen is, one, Rob Coles is going to move, he tells me, to the second district. So all even number seats are up this fall for election. Mm -hmm. He's going to move the second. That's really his district. It, it's areas west of Green Bay. He's represented since 1987, I believe, as long as I remember the state senate. He's going to move there to run for that seat. There's one, one unpairing. Wimberger's in the 30th. Then Andre Jacques is interesting because he's an odd number district. He was elected in 2022. There is a legal opinion out there that says if you're elected to an odd number district like this and the, number, the districts change, lines change, you hold that seat for the next two years. So Andre, who's by the way considering a run for the 8th Congressional District, could just stay where he's at right now, not move or anything, hold the first for two more years, and then in 2026, make a decision. Do I have to move? Do I want to move? What am I going to do? Is there some other opportunity for me? So that's going to be fascinating. But that Green yeah. Bay seat is now just a little bit them leaning, but again, Incumbent Eric Wimberger, been there for almost four years on the Joint Finance Committee, can raise money. He's been through a tough race before. These are not gimmies for Democrats. Well, and it's it's just it's interesting, you know, that this seems settled. We have maps, mm -hmm. but there's still so much to know. And I do. You've been mentioning all these incumbent pairings, and we want to bring these up visually now. If this is from West Politics, you put this together. So in the Senate, you know, we have these pairings. Obviously, the one you just talked about in the Green Bay area with Andre Jacques Wimberger and Cowles. And then let's go to the Assembly. Lots more here. We actually have yeah. to put them on two graphics. Um, so what have you been hearing in terms of what some of these lawmakers are going to do, particularly Republicans, as you could see, there are a lot of those pairings. Well, pairings. when you have big majorities mm -hmm. you, and the lines are redrawn, you're going to end up a lot of pairings because you represent so many seats as far as driving this. But in the Senate, so Joan Ball, we just talked about her, drawing the district John Jagler, she's going to move. Um, in the 8th Senate district, you have um, Dewey Strobel, Republican from Sockville, and Dan Canola, Republican from Germantown. Now, Canola told me this week he's going to not run for the Senate. He's going to recruit candidates for other seats in the area, but he might run if there's nobody else coming forward he likes mm -hmm. for a district. By the way, there's an assembly seat next door to where he lives. 
that does have an incumbent in it, it's pretty Republican, and he has a home, a second home in that district, so that would be a natural fit. Fascinating about that seat. Dewey Strobel has represented like a 60% Republican seat for the last couple of years. That district he's now in now is more of a swinging one. It's 53-ish, 54% Republican. Still not a great pickup opportunity, but maybe it's there. It's suburban Milwaukee. Where has Trump struggled? Suburban areas. Dewey Strobel is a pretty conservative guy. How will he do? How will his message sell in a more swing seat than what he's been used to? That could bring that one onto the map for Democrats this fall as well. J.R. Ross, editor of WISPolitics.com, thanks so much for taking a few minutes to be with us to really break this down and give our viewers a better idea of what these district changes will be. No, oh, anytime. Of course. Thanks for having me. Of course.